Hello and welcome to our channel. In this video, we'll be learning how to create a new plan using Power Automate and the Microsoft Graph API. As of December 2020, there is not an out-of-the-box action for this using Power Automate. However, this can be done using Microsoft Graph API. To be able to use this API, you need to register an app in the Azure portal. So let's go to the Azure portal and look for Azure Active Directory. In there, we need to go to App Registrations. Then let's click on New Registration and let's create a name for our app. I am going to select the first option for the supported accounts and I will leave the redirect URL as blank. Then just click on Register. Once this is ready, let's go to the Certificates and Secrets plate and let's click on Create New Client Secret. I am going to set it to never expire. However, this can depend on your specific configuration. Let's click on Add and once it's created, a new record will be added and we need to make sure to copy the client value from this screen at this moment of the process. Otherwise, if we leave the screen, we may not be able to retrieve it anymore. Now we need to assign the permission for this specific application. In this case, we need to assign the specific permissions that creating a plan will require. For that, we need to go to the Microsoft Graph API documentation. You can find this link in the description of the video. Every action that is allowed using their API has their own documentation page. All the documentation has a permissions area in which you can see which permissions can be assigned for each action to be completed. And this will, will be our base for the next step. Let's go back to the Azure portal and then click on Add Permission. Then let's click on Microsoft Graph. And then we will see two options, Delegated Permission and Application Permissions. The difference between those two permissions is that the delegated permission will require a user and a password to be able to allow the access to the API, while the application permission doesn't require that and will let you access the API actions using only the client secret and the client application ID. So, for example, if you are going to if we are going to create a new plan, we need to make sure that the person that the user that we are using to sign in to the application has access to the group that we want to add the plan to, while the application permission has access to different resources under the API. However, not all actions may not be available. For example, if we go back to the documentation, in the permissions area, we'll see with the permission type, delegated permission and application permission. As you can see, the application permission is not supported for this specific action, meaning that if you're accessing the API using application permission, then you're going to get a not found error when trying to per perform this action. However, if we go, for example, to mail and then open messages, you will see here that both delegated and application permissions are allowed for this specific action to see messages of an account. So the delegated permission pretty much is using the login credentials of a user and the permissions that they have inside the, the tenant. In this case, for uh, create a new plan, we are pretty much forced to use the delegated permission because with application permission, we are, we are not going to be able to complete this action. So let's go back to Azure and click on delegated permissions. Then let's look for this permission, group read write all. We need to select it and then click on add permissions. Once there, we will see the status as not granted for your tenant. However, we just need to click on grant admin consent for your tenant, and then hit yes, wait a couple of seconds, and then your or application will be ready for access. Before moving forward with the creation of the flow, we need to go to the overview tab and copy some IDs that we will use later. In this case, we need two, the tenant ID and the application client ID. Make sure to copy those before moving forward. Now that we have everything that we need to get started, let's take a quick look at the authentication flow in their documentation. As a summary, we need two HTTP codes, one for authentication and another one to create a new plan. Power Automate has embedded some functionality that help using one single HTTP call instead of two. However, that only works if the action that we want to perform has application permissions. For an example of this type of authentication, make sure to go to the link that we will leave in the description of the video to learn more. All right, let's go to my flows and then create a new automated flow. 
in this case we are going to click create a new plan every time a new message is added to a channel inside one of our groups in Microsoft Teams. Let's select the trigger and assign a name. We are going to select which is the group and the channel and then we are going to create a new step. We are going to use HTTP action and the first thing that we need to do is to authenticate. The authentication call uses a post method, so let's let's select post and in the URL we need to copy this link and we need to replace this tenant ID by the tenant ID that we copied from Azure. After that we need to include the content type header. In this case we need to set it as URL encoded. You can also find all these details in the description of the video. Then we need to write the body. The body needs to include six parameters, grant type, resource, client ID, username, password, and client secret. Grant type needs to be set up as password for delegated permissions, so make sure not to change that. For resource, we are going to leave the one that Microsoft suggests, and then we need to replace the client ID by the client app ID that we copied from Azure. Then make sure to replace the client secret from the client secret value that we got from the Azure portal as well, and then replace your username and your password. All right, so let's save this and we're gonna test it. Okay, so if we see the HTTP response, we will see in the body an access token. So I'm going to copy this response and add a new step. We are going to use the parse JSON operation. The content that we are going to parse is the body that comes from the previous step. And then we are going to generate a schema using the sample that we just copied. So let's paste it into the sample JSON payload and then click on done. After doing this, the access token will be easily accessible. So now that we have authenticated, we need to use this access token in the next HTTP call to create a plan. So let's click on new step. We are also going to use the HTTP action for the second HTTP call, the method, the URL and the, and the body of the request will depend on the Microsoft documentation. We can see here the actual request and we also have some examples. In this case, they are indicating that this is a post request. So let's go back to Power Automate and select post. Then they are providing which is the URL. We're going to paste it here. And then we need uh, to indicate the headers, in this case content type, which is application JSON. And the actual body will indicate what is the title of the new plan that we want to create and under which group it will be created. So let's copy this whole sample and paste it here. There are different ways of getting this group ID. You can do another HTTP call to get the, the list of groups for your tenant. However, in this case, we are going to use a workaround. If we go, if we go to Planner application under Office 365, and if you click on one of the plans that you already have, as you can see in the URL, you will find which is the group ID and also what is the plan ID. So for it to be faster, we can just copy it from, from the URL and then paste it into your or request. If this is going to be a variable group, then you can do another HTTP call and get it depending on the, on the group name. In the, for this simple example, we are using an static ID. And for the title value, we are going to select the, the content of the message that was that was posted in the Teams channel. So let's uh, click here and search in the dynamic content. We are going to use the message body content here. So let's click save. And for now, we are only missing to add the authentication code in the headers. So we are going to type authorization and then in the actual value, we need to type bearer and then blank space. And we need to use the output from the parse JSON action called access token and then let's test as you can see the both authentication and plan creation actions have succeeded if we go back to the planner application and click on all plans you can see it's now available if you want to use this id for other actions you need to copy the response 
and then do the same thing that we did with the access token which is per parsing the json we're going to use the body of the http2 call action generate a schema using a sample and then if we use a new step we can create a new bucket and it's going to ask us what is the the name of the bucket that we want to create and under which group id and plan id we need to click on enter custom value and here we can search for owner and then plan id and now we are ready to go all right so the flow has run and as you can see it got the access token and send the request to create the actual plan with the name that we indicated in the message and then we use this output to parse it into the next step and then using this output from the Microsoft Graph API in the Power Automate Actions to create a new bucket under the right group ID and the plan ID. Under all plans I will see this new plan that was created and also the bucket test that we indicated as the last part of this flow. And that's it for this video, we hope you find it useful, we are Power GI.